Vonda crew, this week we're going to be installing the subfloor on the Vonda 2. I know it's been a minute since I've uploaded, but don't worry, I've been recording everything. The boat is a lot farther along than my videos are, so it's going to be some time before we catch up. My goal is to get all the boat building videos completed before I launch the boat. That way we can focus primarily on our sailing adventures. Ahoy, Vonda crew! We're sailing around the world in a Hinkley Bermuda 40, so you're going to want to be subscribed. Before we get too far into the video, I want to mention that if you're disappointed with my lack of uploads, you can always follow me on Instagram, at Vonda crew Sailing. I post very frequently on Instagram and things are pretty much up to date over there, so go ahead and give me a follow. To start off the process of building the subfloor, I'm going to first create templates with cardboard. So I ordered a few sheets of cardboard off Amazon and I just lay them down like you see. I lay them down, take measurements, draw it out, and kind of get the cardboard to fit. Once I get the cardboard fitting the way I want it, I'm going to take it outside and measure it on my marine ply to create uh, the actual subflooring. The plywood I'm using is a marine grade plywood. It's very important that when installing plywood on a boat, you use marine grade just because of the marine environment. Using regular plywood, it'll just fall apart, especially if you use something like OSB. The difference between marine grade plywood and standard plywood is going to be the glue that holds the plies together. The glue used in marine grade plywood is gonna be similar to like an epoxy, something that's very resistant to the marine environment. The entire process took some time. It's very important to measure twice and cut once, so I spend a lot of time test fitting and recutting and remeasuring everything. I also have my tablet here that I use to record all my measurements on, so I'm going to be spending a lot of time measuring, taking my measurements on my tablet where I have a picture of the floor layout and I write the measurements on it, and I'll show you that in a second. But it's very important, so I, I, I take my time with each individual piece that I'm using. I do one piece at a time because you don't want to end up doing it again. At the end of the day, it's not a whole house, it's a boat, you know, so the square footage is actually relatively small. So it's important you, t you spend your time and take your time working with it and making sure it comes out perfect. And it, the results are totally worth it as well. The tricky thing with a boat is the shape. You know, I've got these all these weird shapes going on, whereas a house would be, you know, probably squares and relatively simple to put together. I've got all these weird shapes and things in the way, so I, I really do have to, you really do have to spend a lot of time measuring it and cutting all the little shapes out and making sure everything fits together like a puzzle. The other thing about boats is that you're going to have, you want to have access to your bilge compartment, which is going to be the gray area you see here. To get access to the bilge compartment, you need to have floor beams that, or floor panels that come up. Having the removable floor beams is really what makes this tricky because you need to have, everything needs to be supported, but you also need beams that can be removable. So that means those beams can't be bolted down. And if you have beams that can't be bolted down, then you'll, you'll see, you'll see. It'll, it's gonna have to fit together like a puzzle. Essentially what I did to solve this is I've got my beams that cross perpendicular to the boat. These are these gray beams that you see here. And then I have the actual subfloor which lays over it. The removable subflooring pieces, I'm gonna have those intersect the beams halfway on each side to give them plenty of support. Then, on the bolted pieces, those pieces are going to take three quarters of a beam. And the parts that aren't bolted are going on the other side are going to take one quarter of a beam. And then everything else will be split halfway. So you'll see how it fits together like a puzzle in a moment when I start assembling everything here. But for now, I'm just writing it all down on my tablet, taking measurements, and I, I've got a picture of the floor where I draw it all out and see where it's at. That way I know what to build. And then once I kind of draw it all out here on my tablet and figure out what I'm gonna build, then I'm gonna go back outside the boat and actually cut out all the subflooring panels. Here you can see the image I have on my tablet that I've been working with. So I pretty much just went up on top of one of the hatches and took a picture and then sent it over to my tablet. And then I have different layers where I write out and record all my measurements so I can get an idea of how I'm going to fit all this together. 
this part really made it easy for me to actually envision what I was going to build and how it was actually going to work. Without doing this, I don't, I don't know, it would have taken a lot more effort. I would have had to dry it out, draw it out on uh, paper because it's very important you have the right amount of support for everything. Guys, if you're enjoying my content and you want to continue to support the project, think about heading over to vondacrew.com. That's V-A-N-D-A-C-R-E-W.com. I've got t-shirts that you can get with a $15 donation. They're pretty cool. Go check them out. So this is sort of that puzzle pattern I was talking about earlier. I have half my beams halfway through, and then some of them are going to be three quarters of the beam, and some of them are going to extend one quarter over the beam. This will make sure everything is supported while being bolted down and still fits over all my floor, floor beams. When I cut this stuff out, I just use a jig with a fine tooth blade and then uh, clean, up, clean up the edges with a little sander.
more examples of that puzzle pattern I was talking so you can see how some of the panel extends a quarter, some of it extends halfway, and some of it extends three quarters over the beam. The three quarter sections are where it bolts, the one quarter sections are where the other panel on the opposing side bolts, and then the halfway sections are where the removable panels will be. So you can see I have that marked out for a removable panel and now we're just going to cut all these out too. On the edges of these panels that will be touching the hull of the boat, I actually bevel them out with a 45 degree angle on my jigsaw. That way I can get them as close to the edge of the boat as I can. So you'll see here my jigsaw is kind of at an angle and yeah, that's how I bevel out the side panels. No, it won't work out, but don't work. No, it won't work out, it don't work. Now the pain's worse, yeah, it's gonna hurt. Hope it all works out. I go through multiple iterations of test fitting before I get to the next step of painting and installing, but you can see here how the floor is coming together and how it fits and looks and works. This is one of my final panels that's going to be going up to the bulkhead of the head of the boat. You can see it's got that little one quarter strip to follow our puzzle piece pattern. Now that everything fits, the last thing I have to do is cut out the hole for the keel step so my mast is keel stepped on this boat so the mast is going to be dropping all the way down into the bilge so this is going to be the hole where the mast will drop down into once everything's done and fits then i'm gonna treat all the plywood with uh, epoxy. So this plywood is already marine grade, but of course we want everything to be as strong and durable as possible so it can last a lifetime, so I'm gonna treat it all with the uh, epoxy paint. I'm using Total Boat's epoxy bilge paint here. I'm gonna paint the undersides gray, and then the top side I'm actually just gonna tra treat with base bare clear epoxy. I'll treat it with clear epoxy later because the plan is going to be to glue in an actual hardwood floor over this that will actually look nice. So um, I forgot to record me doing the first coat, but I did end up doing a total of three coats on all of these panels just for the optimum protection. Probably could have got away with maybe one or even zero, but I want it to be as strong as possible, so I did three.
taking toes. Why me out here on my own? But I'm in the put you home. You keep picking up the phone. Still I can go to the store. Till you blowing on my phone. Keeping with sexual tone. When I wanna leave alone. Till you blowing on my phone. Keeping with sexual tone. When I wanna leave alone. And here we have the fruits of our labor. All my panels are completed and treated and painted. So this is how everything turned out and how it looks. And then we'll go ahead and install these. Here's how the top sides look treated with the clear epoxy. So, I only did one coat of clear epoxy because I want it. I still want there to be some binding when I glue in the flooring. I ended up going back after installing the floor though and doing two more coats. And finally, the fun part: I get to bring in all my floor panels for the last time and actually install them. It's really cool to see the boat come together and actually have a real floor. It's starting to look like a real boat in here now. <laughs> For installation, I'm going to be using silicon bronze screws. These screws are going to last a lifetime. They also have a hex driver, so they're going to that way they don't strip. I like the hex drivers because they don't strip. So if I ever have to remove this flooring for whatever reason, uh, I should be able to get these bolts out. But hopefully that never happens. So yeah, we're going to be installing all these. All our sections where the Floor panels extend three quarters over the beam is where the bolts are going to go. I had those marked with an X on our plans. So you can kind of see here now how it all fits together. Finally, we have completed installing the floor. Guys, it's so exciting to have a floor in my boat. I just, I remember at this moment, I was so relieved that I could actually start walking in here without jumping around like a monkey. You can see how our puzzle piece pattern fits together where the panels overextend and underextend three quarters, half a quarter and halfway. So that's why it's kind of got that puzzle shape on the ends. Guys, thank you so much for watching my videos. I'm gonna try to upload more. Um, I'm super busy, you know, working at the boat every single day, all the time, so I record everything, but we're going to be uploading a lot more, especially when we get out on the water. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned. I'll see you next time.